All right, you've asked for it, now it's coming. This is a video on how to set up a pie hole. And you know what, we're gonna also cover installing um, or having an SSH server installed in the same spot. So here's where we're at. I have a brand new Pi, a Raspberry Pi with the Noobs, which stands for New Out of Box Software, um, which is kind of their default installer that makes it pretty easy. And I have this wired into the network. So if you're gonna use a Pi hole, I highly recommend that you have it wired rather than wireless. Wired is going to be much more consistent, much more highly available, and that's something that you want out of the DNS server that is serving your network. So let's go ahead and check that out. All right, so here in Noobs, you've got a couple of options. You've got the option to install the full Raspberry Pi OS with the full desktop environment, and if you're gonna use this Raspberry Pi and connect it to a screen and do all of those things, um, you can do that, and that is an option. But what I'm gonna recommend is that you don't do that. If you're only going to use this for a pie hole or only gonna use it for um, remote access type things that you can do through SSH, I'm going to recommend that you do Raspberry Pi OS Lite. And I'm only gonna install the one. Um, now, if you choose to do the pulp full because you want the desktop environment, because you want all of those things, then once we connect through SSH, you're going to do all of the same things that we do, but just in the built-in terminal that Raspberry Pi OS has. So you can do that. Um, I am going to take this Raspberry Pi OS Lite and we're going to install that. This will install the selected operating system. So we're going to select yes and let it do its thing. Okay, so now the operating system has been installed. So we'll click OK and everything's probably going to disappear here because we don't have we don't have a desktop environment installed, which means this computer doesn't really know how to make things look nice. Um, so this is what we're going to get, just streams of text. It's going to be just text. And now, as you can see, it's all ready for me. So what we're going to do now is SSH into this machine. So to do that, we need to know the IP address of this machine. And to do that, we can do a few things. One, we can log in right here in the terminal. And let me see, I can't make that any bigger at the moment. So let me just log in. The username is pi. The default password is raspberry. I do not recommend that you leave it that way. Um, you can use the password command, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, but now that this is up, again, I realize this is extremely small, but we're going to type ifconfig to get the IP address. And you can see the IP address of F0, which is typically our Ethernet plugged in network, is 10.25.91.129. So I'm going to write that down. All right, now that we've got this thing set up to access um, via the terminal, I, I realize I missed a step and we need to configure it to allow SSH so that we can connect to it from outside because we want to be able to connect to this from anywhere in the house. We don't want to have to plug in and, and do all this stuff. So we know the IP address is 10.25.91.129 and that'll come in handy later. But first we need to turn on SSH and we're going to do that by typing sudo raspi, R-A-S-P-I dash config. And that's gonna pop up our little menu here. So that pops up our little menu here. And if I get myself out of the way, again, this will be much bigger on your computer than it is on mine. And we're just gonna deal with it. I'm just going to select interfacing options. Number three, interface options and I'm gonna select the option for SSH. Would you like the SSH server to be enabled? Warning, default, and weak passwords are a security risk when SSH is enabled. That's warning us that that default username and password of Pi and Raspberry are not so great, but we're gonna go for it anyway. Now SSH server is enabled, so now we can just go down to finish, um, or hit tab, and the right arrow to go to finish and let that wrap up. And now we have a Raspberry Pi 
that is configured to allow us to SSH from outside. Um, this should clear off in a minute, and then we can SSH from our whatever computer we want, because that's what we want to be able to do. We want to be able to go from your desktop or from your laptop, or heck, you can even SSH from an iPad if you want to, and connect and configure and update and do all the things to this device. So that's what we're going to do. All right, so here we are now inside of the terminal on my computer. So I have opened up the terminal application um, on a Mac, it's terminal, or you can use iTerm2. On Windows, it's either the command prompt or the terminal or bash or git bash or whatever terminal it is that you choose to use. So here I am on that terminal, and now I'm going to SSH into that server. So I'm going to type SSH, SSH, and then I need that IP address that I was going to, but I need to go to pi at 10.25.91.129. So now I'm SSHing to that Raspberry Pi. And it's going to say, hey, I don't know who this is. Do you know who this is? I'm going to say yes. And here we are. It's going to ask me for the password. And for now, that is Raspberry. And now we have logged in. And it says SSH is enabled and the default password for the Pi has not been changed. This is a security risk. Please log in and type P-A-S-S-W-D, password, password, to set a new password. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set a new password. And I'm going to set it to something super secure so nobody can ever get in. And now I've got a not default password, which increases the security. It means that I'm no longer at risk of some random person saying, hey, there's a Raspberry Pi here. I wonder if they haven't changed the password. Can I log in? And getting in and breaking things. So now that I'm in, it's time to install Pi-hole. Now there are a few ways to install Pi-hole. Um, and if you go to the Pi-hole website at pi-hole.net, they'll link you many different ways that you can install this stuff. And I'm just going to use the default, maybe not perfectly secure, but the default and probably good enough for me way to do it, which is through curl. Curl dash S capital S L lowercase S capital S L HTTPS colon slash slash install dot pi hole dot net pipe bash. What this is going to do is use curl to download this file um, and then pipe to take that file and run it in bash. So this is going to run the installer script for the pi hole um, and it will do a bunch of stuff. It'll run a bunch of things, um, updating caches and doing all sorts of fun things there. So now we're just going to watch this happen. And now we've gotten to the installer, and it says, this installer will transform your device into a network-wide ad blocker. Let's do that. PyHole is free, but powered by your donations. Do that. PyHole is a server. It needs a static IP address. We must make sure that it has a static IP address. That's a problem for another day. We're going to assume that its IP address is going to stay the same, but you can either manually assign the IP address or you can use what's called the DHCP reservation. And that involves configuring your router to give this Pi hole the same IP address all the time. Yes, I understand this message. You need to figure out how to give it a static IP. So here it asks us which interface we want to use. If we want to use the Ethernet, the plugged in interface, or the wireless interface, we are plugged in because we are smart. And we're going to say yes there. And this says, do you want to use your current network settings as a static address? If you have control over the network, you're probably safe to say yes here, but I'm just going to say skip. We'll set it later. I'm going to assume that setting the static IP address 
has been done in other ways, so I'm going to do that. Now we have to select the upstream DNS provider. What this means, this Raspberry Pi, this Pi hole is not going to be a recursive DNS server. It is not going to do the full resolution of DNS that's been covered in other videos. It's going to just forward these requests on to somebody else, and this is saying, who do you want to forward those requests on to? And there's a bunch of options. You can select your custom ones. You can do whatever you want. I'm going to choose Cloudflare because I think they're cool. Piehole relies on third-party lists to block ads. You can use whatever you list. You can add your own later. Um, we are going to use this default ad blocking list. Um, so we're going to click yes. Do we wish to install the web admin interface? I do because it's fun to look at. Um, and do we wish to install whatever is necessary to get that web interface? We're going to say yes. Do we want to log queries? Yes, because that helps in looking things up later. This privacy mode setting determines how much information you can see about what's going on on your network, and that is dependent. Uh, the option that you select here is going to determine what statistics you can see, how much information you can see. I like to see everything. It's my network. Um, I have kids. I want to be able to use this to keep track of their usage and see what websites they're visiting um, if they need it. So this is where I'm going to select that option. Now we're going to watch this install happen. All right, now it's done and it's given us a password and we need to write down that password. You'll see on the screen your admin password is something or other. Um, something reasonably secure, I would hope. Um, randomly selected and it gives you the URL for how you're going to visit this website. So now it's time for us to look at this. So far, we have not set up anything to use this DNS server. So there's not going to be many statistics on there. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So now that we've got it installed, we're going to go over to our Firefox or whatever web browser you use. Type in HTTP colon slash slash the IP address slash admin and see what shows up. See what that looks like. So here is our website. You'll notice there's not a lot there. Total queries over the last 24 hours? None. Nothing. But that's okay. We'll, we'll get to that in just a second. So now we log in. Now I put in that really awesome default password that was provided. GYQ and hope I typed it right. And I did. So here, now we're in. We can see all of the things. So now that we've logged in, you might be saying, what, um, what, what, what good does this do me if nobody uses it? Well, it doesn't do you any good if nobody uses it. So now we need to configure some devices to use this DNS server. And there's a couple options for doing that. The first option is to just set up a single device statically to use this server as its DNS. That's the easiest option. That's going to be what we're going to do right now. Another slightly, only slightly more complicated option is to configure in your router settings that when your router does DHCP, that it will give out this address, 10.25.91.129, um, just that IP address, out as the DNS server for your domain. And once it does that, then every device that connects to your network is going to start using this pie hole as its DNS server. So let's go ahead and set up this single computer to use this pi hole as its DNS, and then we'll see what happens. So now here we are on my desktop, and we want to update the settings for the DNS on my computer so that it starts to use the DNS requests um, through the pi hole so that we can start to get some filtering. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. First, we're going to right click down in the corner on the little network icon. Right click to open internet and networks or network and internet settings. That's going to open this big window. Then we're going to go to change adapter options and then we will click on that. And here you see a list of the network adapters attached to your computer. You might see one, you might see three, you might see five. Um, it just depends on how many things you've got going on on your network. Mine's relatively easy. I've just got the two. One is virtual ethernet. That's not what I want. One is ethernet. That is what I want. I'm going to right click and click properties. And then within the window that pops up there, I select internet protocol version four and select properties again. And here it says, here's your network settings. 
obtain an IP address automatically. That is what I want to do. I want to obtain an IP address automatically. But instead of obtaining DNS server addresses automatically, I want to use my own. And in this case, I want to use the DNS server that I have set up. So, oh, sorry, not 120, 10.25.91.129. .10 that is our IP address. That is what we're going to use. And I'm going to close that. So here's what I'm going to do. I have an ad blocker enabled on my computer that stops me from being able to, that will um, block these requests before they even get to the DNS server. So instead of using my, and that's installed in my browser, so I'm going to use a new private window to open that up. And then I can go to cnn.com and load that up. And here you see cnn.com. Here's a bunch of stuff. And if I go over and pull up my Raspberry Pi, we see 22 requests have been blocked, 147 total requests that have been sent. And that's Pi Hole. It's a great way to block ads from coming into your network. It doesn't prevent everything, but it does prevent a lot of ads from coming into your network, which makes everything about browsing the web just a much, much more pleasant experience. So go ahead, get your own, and enjoy your ad-free future.